Welcome to Fiona Academy Coaching for Horse Health, Nutrition and Behavior. Let's get to it. Many of my clients ask me how they can save money in hay expenses and still give their horses the right nutrition, especially since prices for hay have skyrocketed lately. Now, in this webinar, I would like to discuss and bust a few myths when it comes down to feeding hay to horses. So we're calling this webinar Mythbusters and Money Savers. Myth number one, good quality hay has to be green. Did you know that hay contains preservatives that stabilize the hay and also maintain or add back in a green color after the hay was dried? And that green color, that artificial green color, will stay for many years. It doesn't mean it is fresh hay. So how can you tell if your hay is good quality as per visual inspection? Well, you want it to be dry. When you break it open and see the flakes, you want it to be dry inside. You want it to smell like hay, not like mold. And you don't want to have any foreign bodies in it, rocks or... Um, you know, dead mice or, <laughs> or, <laughs> or branches. Myth number two. My horse has to eat hay all day long. Now, this is a very big one. And I cannot tell you, in all those decades I've been doing what I do, how much resistance I keep getting until the horse owner realizes that your horse will actually leave hay behind if the nutrition is balanced. If you offer your horse hay all day long because you think or you were told it's natural, well, you would have to put your horse on a treadmill in the stall because in nature, if you, for instance, imagine a, a band of Mustangs, those horses move around most of the day. And as they are moving, they might pick up grass here and there. But as they are eating, they are burning those calories off right away. Hay does have calories. And we're going to come to this later on in, or in another class. So last year, I bought a three-year-old out of pasture and had everyone tell me that he probably needed to be free-fed. Uh, but after speaking with a nutritionist and coming up with uh, a great plan, he gets fed three times a day and uh, as well as a balanced grain ration. And with the program that he's currently on, he doesn't have any cravings, he has no ulcers, and as a matter of fact, as a four-year-old, we just completed and placed in our very first show. Myth number three. My horse needs 2% of its body weight in hay. This means if your horse weighs 1,000 pounds, it would translate into 20 pounds of hay per day. Again, as I mentioned in the previous myth, and I haven't discussed this yet, hay has calories. One pound of hay has about 1,000 calories. Now let's play this through with a simple example. If your horse is 1,000 pounds, and gets out maybe an hour per day, your horse has an average metabolism that requires about, let's just say, 16 to 18,000 calories per day. If you feed your horse 2% of his body weight in hay, from the hay calories alone, your horse will consume 20,000 calories per day, which is four two to 4,000 calories per day too much. And you probably add food in the bucket to this on top of it. There are ways, very simple ways, to balance your horse's hay intake. Your horse has a hay requirement or fiber requirement of about 1.5%. And depending on your horse's metabolism, some horses even require a lower fiber intake. The reason why many horses are craving hay is that they don't crave the fiber in the hay. They don't crave the calories in the hay. They crave the nu nutrition that the hay does not provide them with. Imagine you have a craving for a certain food. 
and you don't have that food at home. But you keep running to the fridge because you do not exactly know what you're hungry for, but you keep eating half the fridge and you are still experiencing this craving after. So if you balance your horse's diet and the three most efficient nutrients in the horse's diet, I'm going to give you those right now here, are the following. Protein as in essential amino acids. Now part of that can come from alfalfa. I usually recommend a ration balancer. And those ration balancers are usually soy bean meal based. This covers the full amino acid spectrum for your horse. And your horse, a thousand pound horse, will require about one to two pounds of a ration balancer or soy based amino acid um, supplement per day. Second, your horse needs salt. The salt blocks do not provide enough salt for your horse. Salt blocks are made for cows. Your horse has a soft tongue, contrary to a cow, and they rarely take enough salt from a salt lick. Therefore, I recommend to put at least one tablespoon per bucket, one to two tablespoons per day, into your horse's feed bucket, and you use unrefined sea salt, white or gray sea salt. In addition, hang a salt bucket for free choice with loose sea salt into your horse's stall. Number three, there is a frequent mineral deficiency that is at parts regional. So if your horse is craving hay and often along with that goes licking pipes, eating sand, eating dirt, your horse might have a certain mineral deficiency that produces a craving and therefore your horse overeats in hay. In this case, you might want to engage your veterinarian or nutritionist to perform a mineral analysis to find out what your horse exactly is deficient in. Myth number four. My horse gets enough protein from hay, from grass hay. Now when I say hay, I mean grass hay like Timothy, Orchard, Bermuda, uh, Teff, any grass. I am not talking about alfalfa. Alfalfa is not hay. It's a different plant that belongs to the family of legumes where beans and peas belong to. So I'm talking about grass hay. Many people think that their horse gets enough protein from grass hay because they have looked at their hay analysis. This is a myth because... When the protein in the grass hay finally gets liberated in the hindcut of the horse, it cannot be absorbed into the horse's body anymore. This is especially applicable for older hay. And this is why horses on 100% grass hay only often lose their top line or muscle. You have to add protein separately from this grass hay to build muscle and top line in your horse. Myth number five, a hay analysis will show me whether my hay is good quality or not. There are several problems with this. Yes, your hay will show, the hay analysis will show you how much starch or sugar the hay contains. It will also show you the mineral content of your hay. It will show you the protein content of your hay. And here's the first problem. The problem is that your horse is not a laboratory beaker. So the digestive process in your horse happens in a chronological order. And the laboratory just sticks the hay into a glass container and extracts the nutrients or the protein or the sugar as it is in there. It does not reflect the bioavailability. That means the amount to which your horse is able to make use of the nutrients in the hay. So you might have actually on the paper good quality hay, but your horse cannot do anything with it. Let me discuss this example on the nutrient of protein. Protein can only be absorbed in the horse's foregut. Hay gets undigested through the stomach, through the foregut, and then gets broken up in the hindgut of the horse. And this is where protein gets liberated. But 
the hindgut cannot absorb the protein. Hindgut can only do three things, absorb water, absorb minerals, and break down the fiber in the hay into volatile fatty acids. Long word. This is all your hindgut can do. So any protein that might be analyzed as 10 or 12 or 14 percent in your grass hay might be completely useless to your horse. Furthermore, the laboratory analysis will not show you the amount of preservatives or toxicity in your hay unless you specifically request a toxicity analysis on your hay. Now, I'm not saying your hay preservatives are toxic, but sometimes farmers and hay growers have to add more preservatives to the hay depending on the weather because they need to get the hay off the field. So some horses have shown to not tolerate this hay too much anymore. So that means the hay might have good nutrients, it might be good quality from a nutritional standpoint, and the laboratory analysis might show this, but it still might not be good quality to your horse. Myth number six, free feeding hay prevents my horse from getting ulcers. Now this is a big topic and I will mention it here because I know that in the comments after, if I don't mention it, the question will come up. This is a big myth. If this was true, that free feeding horses hay all day prevents ulcers, our ulcers would be extinct by now, but they are are none of that. They are to the opposite. Their horses are having ulcers more than ever. There are other reasons why your horse gets gastric ulcers and we will have a separate course on that topic. For now, I'm going to tell you, if your horse has a balanced diet, balanced in fiber, in calories, in protein, in minerals, especially salt, and your local minerals that are mainly deficient, your horse will stop eating hay and will leave it behind. I promise you, it works. Myth number seven. Fine-stemmed hay makes my horse colic. Now, the reason for colic in most of the cases is dehydration followed by impaction followed by complications. And the fine-stemmed hay, if chewed all right, is not the cause for an impaction. If your horse is dehydrated or does not take in enough salt and subsequently does not drink enough water, any hay can make your horse impacted and can produce a colic. Myth number eight. Alfalfa has too much starch and sugar. I'm mentioning alfalfa here because it keeps coming up all the time. Now, alfalfa is not a grass hay. Alfalfa is a separate plant. And alfalfa contains of two components, the leaves and the stems. The leaves contain protein and the stems contain fiber. The sugar and starch content of any hay, whether grass hay or alfalfa hay, depends on the season it was harvested and actually also the time of the day. You can have grass hay, timothy, orchard, bermuda, which is very high in sugar if it was harvested early in the spring. You can have alfalfa hay if it's the last cut of the year, which is very low in starch or sugar. And when I say low, I talk, I'm talking about 7 or 8%. So this myth that alfalfa is high in sugar and starch is absolutely, absolutely so false. Now, what it is higher in is one component that is desirable, and it's protein. Alfalfa leaves contain bioavailable protein because those leaves can be digested in the foregut and are bioavailable as protein to your horse. This is my beautiful horse, Floreal. I was always told that alfalfa hay is high in sugar and will make your horse hot. I was told that by trainers, veterinarians, and a huge peanut gallery of other horse owners. I have to say, it is absolutely not true. Um, 
as soon as I switched Floreal's diet from grass hay over to alfalfa, all of his health issues went away. After many years of chronic diarrhea and hives as a result of him not being able to handle things that are in grass hay, we discovered that he's allergic to almost everything in hay. And on his alfalfa diet, he's never been calmer. He's a completely different horse. And I feel that making the change to alfalfa actually saved his life. Many, many times over the years, I was told to avoid feeding my horses, especially the thoroughbreds, alfalfa, because its high starch content would make them hot. That is simply not true. For years now, we've had our horses on a dietary program that includes alfalfa, and they are happy, healthy, and calm. Myth number nine, a horse cannot live without grass hay. What your horse needs is fiber, and there are fiber alternatives to grass hay. So we are here today with one of my successful clients and horse breeders, Karen, and we'll talk a little bit about how she feeds her horses. Karen. Well, I have been breed Arabians, and I have been feeding them straight alfalfa pellets for the past 20 years now with great success. Great. And um, what have you observed? What do you define by success? How have your horses been doing with the straight alfalfa pellets and how often do you feed them per day? I feed them twice a day. They get a breakfast and a dinner and uh, nothing in between. Uh, I do have a balancer that I feed along with that. And I mean successful from the standpoint that I've never had an issue with any of them colicking or any problem whatsoever due to the pellets. I can't tell you through the years how many people said I was absolutely crazy, I couldn't do that, the horses would colic, there'd be health issues, feeding just straight alfalfa pellets, but it's worked beautifully and the horses love it as well, and they thrive. So you don't have problems with stomach ulcers? Never once with a stomach ulcer or colic or anything whatsoever related to what they're eating. So I've been very blessed. <laughs> Wonderful, and indeed those horses do look stunning. Thank you. Now to the money-saving part. How can you incorporate the information you just got into reducing your monthly hay bill? First, you want to find out how many pounds of hay you are actually feeding per day per horse. For this, I recommend a fishing scale that you can get easily online. If you are feeding, let's just say, 30 pounds or more per, per thousand pound horse per day, this is too much. Engage the help of a nutritionist or a veterinarian, or just send me an email, contact us, and we will help you to give you guidance. Number two, consider adding a ration balancer to your horse's diet, one to two pounds per day for a thousand pound horse. Three, add sea salt, one or two ounces per day, hang a sea salt bucket for free choice. Consider replacing some of your hay with other alternatives, maybe beet pulp pellets soaked as instructed and needed, or alfalfa pellets or alfalfa hay, second or third cut. That is it for today. Thank you so much for listening and please comment to us so we can answer to your questions. As we all know, there is always so much more to learn around horses. Stay tuned at our courses that are upcoming and stay connected at FionaAcademy.com. Thank you.